We're guestless. We have no guests. That's okay. All right, everyone, welcome to this very special episode of the Safety Third Podcast. We have real lawn chairs now. It's bizarre. This is I, nice. It Check actually it feels so weird to be in this room and not be like a little uncomfortable in my butt. Honestly, there's it's no like, nails sticking into my butt this <laughs> time. It's like actually so comfortable compared to what we had before. And we refreshed it. <laughs> so it's, thanks to our Patreons for yeah. helping us afford these yeah, new chairs. Got new that chair was like. $35. That is incredible. I've never sat in a $35 lawn chair before. The ones we got from Big Lots, the like tiny chairs, yeah. were like $80, 90, $90, $90 dollars each, bucks. and they were way less comfortable. They were also God. meant for children, but... God, we should be selling chairs. What are we doing? Selling <laughs> shirts and, and stickers or whatever. I'm pretty Jesus. sure if we tried selling we chairs... We could sell gamer chairs. It would cost us money. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh it's got like one of those heat reactive seats so you can sort of see your ass crack oh, and yeah, ball yeah, outline yeah. on like it. The mood mood chair. So you know how hard the hard you've been gaming, the more pronounced <laughs> your ball your ball outline is. Can we make a machine that helps reverse the dent that people get in their fucking heads from headphones? <laughs> yeah, oh, it's like dude, a, no. yeah oh, my hair does yeah. that. <laughs> It's bad. You just need like one of those dent pullers for a car, but like smaller <laughs> and for your head. I just do this and hold it for five minutes and let go and, and nothing changes. It's just me. It hurts sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah. Like you have them on for so long, it starts to like cut into your head. I wouldn't. I'm not a true gamer. I wouldn't know. I, I'm still no. a console gamer, even though I feel like all the evidence points to the contrary of like what's better. I like yeah, consoles. You're objectively wrong. A console, so. <laughs> I like a console is kind of nice because it's sort of more of like a living room experience. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You know, you, sit you don't on have chair. to like go in your own gamer cave and kind of yeah. isolate from society. Exactly. You yeah. get you get like the TV experience, but also the interactive experience. Mm -hmm. Computer games are like you I don't know. Gotta, it feels like you gotta sit at a desk, right? Yeah. Like, there's a not dark, really yeah. another like a way to do it. Yeah. Piss bottles. Right. I mean, a lot of that's regular for consoles too, though. Like console gaming totally is a piss bottle thing as well. You think? I think so. Yeah, it is. It is. Like, but it's. I don't know. Maybe more. God, I, I don't know. No, I've known some guys before. You know, I literally. I was so excited when like. PS5s were available. Like there was one in stock at the Best Buy by me that I I just I bought it. I didn't even think about it. I just bought it once I saw it was there. Yeah. And then I didn't touch it for like probably like six months. <laughs> I did the opposite. I waited forever and yeah. then I bought one. I played it a bunch for two weeks and I haven't touched it since. <laughs> Bought the Harry Potter game for Chelsea. Honestly, the amount of money I spent, it was it was just the value was just the feeling of finally having a PS5 yeah. and not in using it at that all. That was it's my first console I've ever bought. What? Yeah. Was a PS5? Uh huh. You didn't have like a like an N64. I, I had, never really? had a Nintendo. The only thing I had growing up was a uh, Game Boy Pocket. Wow. Yeah. What no, did no. you do? You have a Switch. But a Switch doesn't count. It's not a real console. Yeah, a Switch is a console. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a it's a cool. You can I I appreciate the Switch for what okay. it can do. I get like maybe the graphics are a little poo poo, especially for like the third party like ports or whatever. Right. But like for being able to, because you know like like if someone's watching like the TV or playing another game, you can just undock your Switch undock and it. then do your yeah. own thing. Play your own. Oh. So will uh are are you wrong or is Alan wrong? <laughs> <laughs> we're both wrong. Somehow, I, I think it's kind of right in the middle. Like, for me, I for me, I feel like as a kid, like having the console, like the thing that connects the TV with the controllers and everything, is kind of like a console. Like the Switch is a console, but it's definitely closer to a Game Boy. I think like, it's kind of both. Right, like right, yeah. there's something about having the thing very like, sitting answer. on your on your entertainment <laughs> console. No, I mean it is. Like, yeah, you know, you, it is. The Switch basically is like you know better than an N64. No, I mean that's literally what it was marketed as. I think is like the middle ground. Yeah, kind of thing. So and how like, you can like take it out and play with friends is kind of cool. Right, too. right. Even though I've never done that, no. I don't have any friends. Exactly. But if I if I did, <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> you're not. We're not even real, right? You're just you're just spacing out in your living room right now. Oh yeah. You're sitting on the couch pretending you're talking to these two people. <laughs> no one wants to play games with Kevin after he installs that all the sex mods. That one time in college, I accidentally <laughs> took too much uh, Nyquil, and I still haven't woken up yet. <laughs> This is a long journey. <laughs> I still want to try. Uh, did you guys ever see the Nintendo Labo? It was like years yes. ago. I never mm. actually bought. I don't no. think anyone bought it. No. But it, no. Like it looked like just interesting enough where if I could get it for free, I would be really into it. It looked like a really what solid way it? to squeeze grant did money out of schools. <laughs> it was it was um supposed to be this like 
platform for playing Nintendo games where you would get a bunch of like like stamped or laser cut cardboard yeah. templates and you could okay. use them to like you could bend them into like objects that then you could use to like interact with games. I think they ca- oh, it came okay. with a game specifically for the. They were Nintendo like just Labo. a bunch of like sensors that you could connect. And no, you, like, it, was, it was like the 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 it was remotes, clever, more the, clever. Yeah, than the that, controllers yeah. for was it the Switch or the Wii? It was. I, I think it might have been the Switch. So it's like the Switch controllers. Switch. Yeah, they have like you know an accelerometer. It's got like an IR thing. Like it's yeah. got you know a, a whole suite of sensors in it. And the idea was you could build this like essentially paper craft object that the controller would go into and it would be like oh, a steering wheel. There was yeah. like one gotcha. that was like a robot arm. And so it would use the sensors to in- to control something in the game. Right. Yeah. But the controller itself would be like this weird cardboard thing that you have to build. It had no sensors oh, in it. It like, like- it like was almost like little <clears throat> like extension arms to the. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. there was a for Mario Kart. They had those controllers where you put the Switch yeah. controller in the yeah, wheel. It's yeah, it's like that. But Ima- like a, imagine that for the same price, the, but the you have to build ball. it yourself. Yeah. Throw it out of yeah. cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think it did well. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo Switch throwing knife adapter. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I always, I, I like the idea. I really did like the idea of like you know being able to build like your own sort of like physical thing that that is represented in the game that like you just stick yeah. the controller in you don't need to yeah. do like any other like soldering or like wiring feels like something like that. that like one that one in 100 kids would go absolutely one in a with. thousand kids <laughs> one in a thousand kids would go absolutely buck wild building their own stuff and customizing it well, i mean that's i remember like I was so into, um, like, remember, like, the, the Scholastic Book Fair? They still do those, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I remember yes. I didn't buy a book. I bought this, like, little shitty electronics, uh, like, learn electronics kit. No, mm-hmm. and it was they had those? Yeah, well, so wow. it was just a cardboard box with holes in it that you could stick springs in. Mm-hmm. And then you mm-hmm. could connect components and mm-hmm. wires to the springs. Yeah. And it, like, had, uh, uh, like, you know, on the cardboard box was, like, yeah. layouts printed on it. It was, like, a one step above a breadboard. Like, it made, it was, like, a breadboard, but even fancier. Uh, Even, well, less well, good, because like, it was made out of... It was made yeah, out but of it was, like, something a kid could do, where you could, like, bend <laughs> yeah. the springs back yes. and shove the yes. legs yes. in. Um, and, like, I remember I bought one of those, and I, I thought, if I felt like jimmy neutron i felt like a really? fucking genius dude well because you're like plugging yeah. shit in and it's like and it catches on fire and you're like <laughs> yeah! yeah i love science <laughs> i remember uh it had a little like audio transformer in it and i didn't really know what to do with it um and at one point i think i it it just had a brief description of the components and says something like you know it, it can step up voltage for ac or and you're whatever like, what's it. voltage yeah i know and so you know what i ended up doing i ended up just connecting a battery to it and then the other two ends um i I found like an earwig. I found like an earwig outside and I just yeah. plugged the wires into the wall to, the ear- to see if it would die. And it did die, but I don't think it was because of the Yeah, I, think, I don't think it was the electricity. I think it was because the wires just poked holes in it. But that was what I decided to do with the transformer. I had, I got one of those kits. Someone bought me a, like a, the fancier one when I was in high okay, school. Okay, not the card yeah, Not the cardboard one. Nintendo it was Labo. The plastic though. one. I've seen But they those. also have those springs really that you nice. bend back. Yeah, it was a spring all spring yeah. loaded and the board had a bunch of like kind of fixed in place things as well. Right. Geometer, yeah, and, and then it had some stuff, you know, everything else you would add on. And I remember like the early, like the easy ones with like a potentiometer, you're like, yeah, okay, that's cool, I get it. And then it would start doing like transistor stuff. And I swear to God, logic circuits, yeah, those wow. books, those kits are made by like, like it's got to be just boomer electrical I, engineers. So yeah. And I'm like, who is this? Like thinking back, who is this made for? It's made like, for your dad to get you to yeah. make, yeah, so that yeah. your dad can play with it because like no kid, yeah, like, act like it's it's meant for a child. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like college level or beyond, like like not even like beginning EE classes are yeah. more simple than this. And well, it's like how and the, and the instructions like not it was it was so bad. Yeah. Well, like, what do you do with like electronics that are not like wh- what's even interesting without a transistor? Nothing. There, there was well, no yeah. no Arduinos back then. There was nothing like oh that. No. I remember. Oh, I remember buying um Decimal the novel. basic stamp. Oh. I don't know if you guys remember no. the basic stamp. I never use this. I've never used this. Stamp. The basic stamp was like the the microcontroller before Arduino, and then even after that, I 
I bought a, I think it was called the Parallax Propeller. Mm, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what I did with both of those? Let them sit on the shelf. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Because the only reason Arduino even took off was because like there was so yeah. much documentation. And then we'll get the yeah. purists who were like, well, it's not a real microprocessor yeah, if like, you don't sharpen your teeth on the asphalt. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, what the hell? I mean, it's, it's like, it's like, like. I have, I still have the, I almost want to like try and do a project with them now just to yeah. like see if I could get some use out of them. But at this point, it's like, how would you even program it? I have no idea. And I don't even care. <laughs> it didn't even come with USB. Yeah. I think it had like the, um, like a, a, the, called para- the serial. Port oh yeah, my God. Oh, like yeah. with the 20 pins. Yeah. You have to like plug into the Well, it's actually port. superior yeah. because the serial port, <laughs> like, you know, exactly. <laughs> That's like such a like electronics yeah. purest thing to do. But there were certain things that when I was younger that like were completely beyond me yeah. that Arduino completely snuffed out was you just plug the yeah. thing in, you install the software and you can just like upload code and write yeah, it. There's like, examples. Yeah, Number and, and one, there's examples. Exactly, there's, there's like examples. modules you can buy. Yeah. It's like, this is a heat sensing module. Like mm-hmm. you don't need yeah. to know what's going on at the component level to, yeah. to use it. And it was made by college students. I think it was a college project in Italy. Arduino. Huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whereas really like cool. the propeller and pick are probably a bunch of old yeah. crusty oh, the boomers. Pick. I have a I had a pick too. I never used any of that shit. No. I probably spent like yeah. two hundred bucks and all that stuff. Yes. In the nineties, that was like a thousand dollars. And you're like you're like, I actually literally don't care about any of this. Oh. God. My dad tried. He got me yeah. one of those Radio Shack electronic learning labs kits. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and it was like, dude, I was must have been eight years old, ten years old, and yeah. it was like one of the books was, you know, analog circuitry. And then the book number two is Ugh. digital logic circuits. Ugh. And I was like, this is the worst Christmas present ever. Oh, like yeah. I could, I could make some like a potential, no, uh, a piezo buzzer. Like I hooked it up somehow. So it would screech at different frequencies when I, you know, it gets real loud if you plug it into the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the problem is like, how do you make it? How do you make it easier? Have it's you like, seen the? Uh, it was a Kickstarter campaign that I backed. Oh, like, I think I know it's the the yeah. mechanical mechanical what was it? Spintronics. Yeah, even that dude. There were crusty buttholes. Like I've seen, I've seen crusty buttholes complain about the hydraulic analogy, complain right, about right. this like mechanical uh, version. Because like when you do engineering, yeah, you learn differential equations. Yeah, and like what is a spring mass damper system? <laughs> it's a differential equation, right? Yeah, and then what is inductance capacitance and resistance it's the same, it's literally the same, same thing. thing it's the, the exact knows. same thing and so <laughs> yeah. when people when people complain <laughs> it's the same thing if you take a spring you stretch it all the way back you let yeah. it go into an airway it does the same thing <laughs> it's that's, when you that's take known as an rocks. inductive spike <laughs> if you take an earwig and a and a mass <laughs> The force on the earwig increases because the inertia has nowhere to go. Because the Spintronics thing, the idea is like it's very visual. It's very yes. like it's like Legos. Yeah, yeah. Because it's 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 um the the analogy is like instead of uh, electrons, you yeah. start with like a, a motorized spinning thing that you connect yeah. with belts and stuff to your right. other components. Yeah, and that's like the a mechanical version of an electric circuit. Right, and it, it's like I feel like. It's obviously like you could never make it like a perfect analogy because right. there's mm-hmm. like complexities mm-hmm. with it. But from like an intuition standpoint, I feel for me, the stuff I've learned the best are when I developed an intuition, even if it was an analogy of like, oh, it's like this. Dude, I still don't know what electricity is. Okay. But this, this is like an it's inductor. It's like marbles yeah, in a pipe. An inductor is like a mass. It's so like think of think of like you have a mass, right? And you hit a wall. What happens? Uh, the the earwig explodes. <laughs> exactly. Into a, into a tiny little splat. And what happens if you have an inductor and it, the, it's charged up and there's nowhere to go and there's an earwig on the other side? Uh, the, I, I guess the same thing. It turns into a stain. Yes. <laughs> it's like a bunch of energy with nowhere to go. Okay. Here. Wait. Wait. All right. All right. All right. Scientist, Mister okay. Scientist. I I got a question for you. What What is static electricity? How the how the fuck and does that why work? Why has it been so bad this week? Is it just <laughs> well, the me? winds? The winds have dried everything. Yeah, out. everything's yeah. so dry now. It's like I get out of my car. Right, here's what I've never understood. Right, like like like, you ever just feel insane because like there's the same basic sort of explanations, boilerplate explanations for things. But then when you think about it, there's like no. Oh, I see what you're saying. So it's yeah. like static yeah. electricity is like oh, you rub two dissimilar things and electrons go off of one. 
and they okay. go to the other. Where are they coming from? I have, I have, a, I have, a, Adam, I have, I have, electrons. are you I know. just stripping are you, electrons off of atoms? I have a simple explanation. Yeah. Uh, high voltage doesn't follow any of the rules you were taught. <laughs> <laughs> now I know I'm that like, doesn't fully answer the question. How, how do you just take electrons off an atom? Isn't that supposed to be really hard? Isn't there like cl electron clouds that like literally determine like if, if a chemical reaction Dude, will occur? Dude, somebody watching things? this is seething right now. I know because they're, they're like, seething so harder stupid. because they were really mad about the <laughs> microprocessor <laughs> thing, and now they're even more mad about the <laughs> static charge. <laughs> but like, where where are the electrons coming from? And how can they just it's... like how do you just take them off of one thing and onto another thing, and that first thing is like fine? And it's like, like by by physical contact, too. yeah. It's like, like I'm just like, oh, I just stole some of your electrons. Yeah, so yeah, because it's like the or like here's some of my electrons. Zap. Yeah, like how does that work? Because it's like they're not ever actually physically touching, right? Because that's the thing is like matter is mostly empty space, and you're only yeah. feeling like charges repelling or whatever. And so it's like they're not even touching. How is electrons moving off of one thing to the other one? Like how does a like a, like a Van de Graaff generator, right? It's like a rubber belt yeah. with like a little like copper wire that touches the belt, and it just spins. Like so, you can just suck electrons off of things with no detriment to the thing. And it's like it's you you take yeah, them yeah. off it's actual atoms but like there's no chemical reaction happening there's no like you see what i mean yeah where it's like i've never there's had the not balls very intuitive. to say it out loud <laughs> but you know what i'm doing it now how the fuck does static electricity okay, work okay i've got one how do magnets work oh I, dude <laughs> you've got uh uh domains you've got oh yeah uh, magnetic domains what? Magnet that, are, com? that are not aligned and then you al align magnet them. pizza <laughs> <laughs> magnet.xxx <laughs> like i like and i guess only iron and nickel do, do magnet.fe all right so here's here's a picture of a van der generator it literally yeah. just shows yeah. you it's the, the, the like minus signs level. and the plus yeah. signs yeah so that's the, all they ever when do. it spins the belt positive charge ends up here negative charge ends up here <laughs> dude we're just taking all these scientists for granted yeah there's probably yeah. one guy who like actually knows like yeah. physically like intuitively that's what's the guy we on. pissed off yeah yeah, you know what I like to do? I like to rub my feet on the carpet and then touch all the microprocessors. I like to, <laughs> I like to rub my feet on the carpet and touch all my pets. <laughs> well, because that's that's like once once you get into like the really high voltage stuff, like power lines or like lightning, and then it's like like or even like power tran power transmission is some magic shit. Do you know how like how do power lines work? Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? Well, because like like it it does like um like a three phase thing right oh. so you like you don't actually lose energy over those long distances but like how the mm. fuck does no, you that do work? you do so the reason that they use I, so i looked into grounding too lot. so oh, right because grounding doesn't yeah. really make sense either yeah it does it does but it oh, doesn't oh yeah that's that's what okay dude. so here wait, 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 wait. i think i know go? i think i know ground? yes <laughs> Yes. They just go in the ground. They go into the ground. And then we take wait, them. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. From what? Wait. From magnets? Okay. So we spin a motor and we take electricity from We really from should magnets? have had a smart guest so, on for this one. So I know I researched this. So it's not, it's someone else who I'm going to regurgitate wrong who's smart. <laughs> They're listening right now. Also, I actually can't believe fuming. more people don't die from wall outlets. <laughs> like it's actually crazy. You know, everyone says the wall outlet is like the right side up with the ground on the bottom. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that putting the ground on top is like a way better way yeah. to do it. Yeah. Because anything, because if a penny or something falls oh, in, right. well, there was like a whole TikTok challenge a while back, right? Where people would slide yeah. coins on like, purpose. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's use gravity. Uh -huh. Let's put the gravitational force in the direction to accelerate objects into the, the worst terminals. There's, there's a whole uh, uh, technology connections episode video on why even like, why do plugs have holes in them? Has he done that already? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's the answer? Is it a retention thing? It's actually not. It has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with It's just with random? Retention. I think it's like- Is a, it like when they stamp them together or I think something? there's- Dude- No, because only in one of them. I hate no, the that big I don't remember. I remember being no, they, so they interested in this. They I don't even holes. remember. It's not retention though. Because he said that's the first guess. But if you actually like plug and unplug and like look at it and just even feel to see if there's any kind of detent- Stop, it's not retention. <laughs> <laughs> just, just uh, try and put it in and out. But you just just do the tip. No, it's more of like you this. won't feel anything. <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> that's why I like to plug my outlets in just dangling. <laughs> okay. Outlets should just be a fucking two exposed uh, bolts, and you just everything's alligator clips. Yeah, that's your old apartment. You had oh, wait, the what twelve. What if it was like two concentric rings? So it like always just goes in. <laughs> Manufacturing complexity. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my understanding 
is yeah of how the electrical grid works in yeah. the u.s so the, the reason that it's not dc so there used to be dc they wanted dc that was edison right yeah but dc you have a ohm's law problem a power yeah. transfer problem because the more power you want to push mm -hmm. because your current is now higher because your voltage is lower yeah you have more power loss in the wires yeah you'd have to have like a battery at every home for it to make sense because yeah. you couldn't draw like 10 amps over yeah it would like no yeah. it would never work like it yeah. would just you would lose <clears throat> so much power into the grid yeah it's like the lower voltage the more the higher the losses are right. in the wire because power is proportional to the the current through the wire so if you have a ton of current through the wire you have a ton of power loss because mm -hmm. the wire is a resistor yeah so instead you can cheat the system by putting a tiny bit of current but if you want only a tiny bit of current how do you get that power through high yeah voltage. high voltage and so you, you essentially have like a really thin rod that has a ton of force behind it mm -hmm. instead of a big thick rod with like moving slowly like, like a bullet exactly yeah. it's and like then you have the transformers that transform the high yeah. voltage into they like turn from current. a car to a robot right. guy uh -huh. looking thing and yeah. so it comes when you come down to <laughs> houses he, he runs into your tv <clears throat> right and he does a movie for you exactly <laughs> so the ground is it's a I, I think well, ground, there we go. It's gone. He had it and it's gone. Just, it, I think it's Those just a safety thing. In his brain just grounded. Grounding is just I think it's just a safety thing. Like yeah. that's it. Okay. It's so earth is like the common connection between everything. Right. And so electricity literally goes into the earth, which is they have to pound a copper rod into the ground. Yeah. And so in your wall outlet. I, I'm 90% certain it's just a safety me measure so that if if power finds a way to get from the hotline yeah. to ground, mm -hmm. even though ground and neutral touch, if, if power finds a way from hot to ground, you have a problem. And so I think it will like it will remove charge from an object like the ground is usually connected to the case or something like that. Right. Enclosure. But then on GFCI mm -hmm. or what do they call it now? GF. I don't so know. It's like four letters I, now. Ground like fault a, like interrupter. A breaker. Yeah, a breaker. Was, yeah. Well, okay. ground, yeah, ground GFCI. fault. It compares GCFI. the current going through hot and neutral. And if they're not within a certain like equalness to each other, uh -huh. that means power is escaping through ground. And okay. if power is escaping through ground, it means it's going through like a copper pipe or something like that. Like right. instead of going through the wire and it trips. Yeah. So if you you know throw a toaster in the bathtub, uh, hot will go from the water to the pipes or to the water, whatever, right. and escape the wrong path, and then it trips. I remember when GFCI breakers were were new, there was like a, a, a one of the brands had a problem with a batch they had to fix, but it took a few years. It was that if you held like like a stun gun or something by mm -hmm. one of them, it would just trip just from the back. Yeah, because yeah. it was like, it's trying to measure oh, like yeah, a very yeah. sensitive difference in current. And so if- Yeah, it's it, like millivolts. Yeah, it's like really tiny. Yeah, like five, I think it's the cutoff, or milliamps. But, but so like 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 it has to ground has to be part of the reference for the power that's being sent to your house for the electricity to want to go there because it's it doesn't just go there's nothing special about the earth right like it's it's and just because I think it's just a third free wire yeah like at some point at the like the power station is literally has something plugged into like the earth yeah. and that's why that's like a I reference think it's point just like the other. To. I think what would happen otherwise is you would sort of end up with weird differentials in places. Right, right, right. And so right. I think the grounding keeps oh, yeah. everything at like a similar potential. Like a ground yeah. loop. Yeah. So it, is what they, I think that's a term I'm for pretty it. sure. Because otherwise you might like find a spot where there's like thunderclouds or something like up in the mountains. And like <laughs> right. all of a sudden the, the, like, the system there is like a little bit higher. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I just, I remember because it's like, it's like like the the dealing with like the mini version of this with like the electric fence um like a uh, charger inverter generator or whatever where it's like like you can cover however many like acres of land with like a big electric fence generator and you just have to like nail a stake mm -hmm. into one end and then that high voltage is referenced to ground for the entirety of the fence and it was like so powerful that the one time when we did that thing where it was like we all like touched each other to close that circuit with with uh, an electric fence at Jake Laser's place. Right. I remember we had everyone standing on like a sheet of plywood. Yeah. But even that, I think it was like creating like a weird capacitor with the yeah. ground because when it was on, like there were still small jolts that everyone right. was feeling right. even before we connected yeah. uh, my foot to earth. So yeah. it was like, it was so powerful that like that thin sheet of plywood was still allowing like charge right. to accrue on either end. And I think that 
ground works a little bit differently at like the voltages that it's being used at than we're kind of used to at like 12 right. or 5 volts. Like right. I think it does actually like it's leak also out. like not very conductive. You know, like if you yeah. try to measure the resistance of dirt. But that's why they pound the <laughs> stake in like, you know, like yeah. a, like deep into the ground is yeah. to get like a lot of contact. And then you get something. Yeah. But like at high voltage, it's still pretty conductive. Yeah, but I, I think it's better than... But it's not that conductive. Right. Yeah. So I think you're right. It is probably just like a backup or like a charge yeah. equalizer kind of thing. So this says, the whole this one quote I found basically just says the neutral wire is meant to transfer current away from the device even though it's ac uh -huh. the ground right. is a path for when something goes wrong so it's like um it's like if if there is something wrong in the appliance hopefully it ends up going through ground instead of neutral right also i'm pretty sure that dc is better uh for transmission than ac i think that ac is actually has higher losses what i think so because then you, you start getting eddy currents Hmm. I think so. So you think like 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 if we if you did like like a high voltage low current DC transmission sort of a thing that it could theoretically be less lossy than like big honking AC. Yeah, but I don't know about that. Isn't that isn't that like why te like Tesla won Tesla won the current wars because it was just better overall. That poor guy that's pissed off at this is like even angrier now. Yeah, I know this. Oh my god, we're giving someone an aneurysm, dude. I don't think we're that wrong. We, it might not be the full answer. That's but how you know we're wrong is that we don't think we're that wrong. Because that means that means we're so stupid we can't even realize how wrong we are. That's how you know we're wrong. But then why does stuff work? Why does stuff work without the ground? How come I can rip the? How come <laughs> when I accidentally broke the ground pin off my refrigerator and I plugged it in, it still works? How come everything I touch in the refrigerator feels carbonated even if I don't open it and I, I touch it? I'm glad. Glad that there are people that are like like somehow just through luck of the draw there's people in the world that are smart enough to understand all this that also were at some point were put in charge of designing these sorts of things Can you met if we had to design like a, an electrical electrical grid from scratch like ourselves yeah. like what it would end up looking like i it think we could i here i actually think we might do an okay job i'm pretty sure a lot of what exists nowadays is just band-aids Right. On right, top of Band-Aids, right. on yeah. top of Band-Aids. some, like, dumb decision that somebody yes. made, like, 100, 200 like, years actually, ago. Actually, like, what is, like, uh, the embroidery machine? So there's mm -hmm. a file called, um, uh, God, what do they call it? The What's the base level file? The For what, like, the designs? Like Yeah, the, there's, there's so the, the file type that my machine can take, one of the, like, it's, like, the base level file. It'd be, like, a notepad document, like a TXT, okay. right? Like, a TXT is, like, as simple as it gets. Right. And then someone does, like, doc. And then they have like yeah. Doc X, and it yeah. starts kind of like you lose this backward compatibility, and it like it starts sort of breaking things forwards. Yeah, like a text file works everywhere. Yes, like you can open it with anything. Yeah, but then everyone adds like more complex stuff to it, and like sometimes I think those additional features cause like they conflict with the original design. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, <sighs> let me think. Like, like what is what is something? So like, like your your the embroidery machine is essentially like it, it does it use G code or something similar? So it uses to basically G code. The problem with that file, <clears throat> it's like a D. What is it? I can't remember what it's called anymore. Um, it D -I -C -K. doesn't. It, it, D I C K. <laughs> it, it, so the embroidery file is like it has points and and speeds and stuff like that. Uh huh. Um, like it'll tell you where to go and what to do, where how to get there while doing it. Like it either uh -huh. wants you to go here or it wants you to stitch or it wants to move without stitching. Like it's really simple G code. It won't do color changes. Hmm. It'll indicate a color change, but it won't provide any context or information as to what the color is. And so then what you have to do is use a second piece of software that then you go through and you specify every single color of each change because each color is on a different needle. And if you ever yeah. switch the colors, you have to rearrange them. Oh, uh, Okay. And then you export it as a different file type <laughs> and then put it on the machine. Or you can take the raw file, the simple file, and put it on the machine. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then you can change the colors on the machine. Like manually. Manually. So oh. you have to enter in each color. And sometimes, like, depending on how you did your design, it can be, like, dozens and dozens and dozens. It's, like, really Oh, of bad. color changes. It's really it, bad. it can, like, bounce back. Yeah. From, it, yeah. Yeah. Like, imagine, like, a multicolor 3D printer having to specify every color change. <laughs> like, it'd be bad. Like a 15 nozzle yeah. 3D printer. So... I feel like that's the kind of stuff where they start, you know, they make it simple, they do this, and then all the technology on top of it just like 
kind of rides on that and then never fixes any of the problems. There's got to be a better example, though, of something where it's worse today because of the decision they made long ago. I mean, at like everything. The, any, yeah, Wi- any, like yeah. 2.4 gigahertz kind of is one of those, like Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, they were just like yeah. looking for, for bands that were like available so in the op- spectrum. Well, they opened up microwaves. So 2.4 gigahertz was opened up because of microwaves. Uh-huh. And so it was like, we'll let you use, you know, microwaves can be 2.4 gigahertz. Uh-huh. And then it's just, you know. Is that what happened? Was it microwaves first or? Microwave ovens first. Okay. Right? <clears throat> and then it opened up that, they, you know, they, it was unregulated. Yeah. And they like literally Whatever had. Here. Yeah, exactly. And then that's why everything's 2.4 gigahertz. Gotcha. Right. Because it's like, it's, it's microwaves. Like, don't put anything else on every monitors yeah. it's gonna and Wi-Fi. Too much noise. Yeah. Yeah, so now everything is on 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah. It's like the one consumer yep. allocated band. Like and like every like I don't think they ever yeah. would have predicted how much shit is shoved into 2.4 gigahertz. Uh-huh. Like I bet you if you look at like total bandwidth across, you know, the usable radio spectrum, mm-hmm. I bet you it's got to be like 99% uh-huh. is in the 2.4. Is like like yeah. think of how much more room there is. <laughs> what so hmm, it makes me think like uh you what what would get knocked out if you made like a jammer like a very narrow frequency band like radio jammer just for 2.4 gigahertz what does that knock out like everything like everything Everything. yeah yeah i think like all your consumer electronics and well i don't know i think everything's gotten so smart now and good at like telling. (laughs) Yeah, nothing can defeat a jammer though well (laughs) they're pretty good i mean it's because there's so much noise on the spectrum already they're all they all have their own like digital signal you know like encryption and they can tell like if this is something i should listen to or not right it's really good at picking out the signal from the noise like imagine like all you need so much power. Yeah. 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah. On your Wi-Fi, your neighbor's Wi-Fi, the other neighbor's Wi-Fi. Like, dude, it, there's got to be like tens or dozens of just Wi-Fi access points. Yeah, just yeah. overlapping. And they're all streaming information to devices. How all does the, that work? They God. like they break the 2.4 gigahertz down into what smaller bytes. What if I bytes. told you it was electrons? <laughs> <laughs> That guy is so mad right now. Oh my <laughs> god! Well, I'm because that's uh, uh, all right. All right, I'm just I'm just laying it all out now. I don't really know how like radio waves work. What is that? You I don't like. How do you transmit a like like? It's literally light. It's you've resonance. got it's you've light. got an antenna. Yeah. And then what is at the other end of that antenna? That's that's creating. I think it's literally just waves. like a magnetic field, kind of. But, but it's like, resonating. So it's like it's like a swing where if they if you dump it into the antenna at the right frequency, you end up with like larger pulses. But how, how is you, it just how one antenna? Like how do you put an- data? How do you turn that into data? You just modulate well frequency modulation or amplitude modulation. Yeah. So you can you can pulse information on that. Or like it's like uh you know like the, the IR remotes, like, like they like 38 yeah, kilohertz. Yeah. There's a filter that filters out 38 kilohertz. Right. And it's like Morse code, but really fast. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I get like the modulation, but like how, cause, cause it's like, you know, with, with an infrared remote, you know, you've got an infrared led and it's got, you know, positive, negative, you turn it on and off at a certain frequency. The antenna is like what, at the end of like an inductor. And then like, how are you actually pushing electrons up and down an antenna? I think just like transistors and then they tune it. So they literally, it's almost like, like a motor but they have to dump energy into the motor in a sort of tuned, like a kind of black magic way. But just at one end. Yeah. It goes. Like imagine. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think just, it's no, like, this guy is actually screaming yeah, right now. And I, I want to say that, that I don't made, really understand how this works. We've made I a watched, s- very small number of people madder than they've ever been in I've, their I've entire watched, life. I've watched a lot of videos about it and I don't think I still understand how it works. But. I think it's like imagine you had a motor and you're trying to spin it, but it required you to like push energy into it at like in a perfect way, like almost like a like a brushless motor kind of. Right. Where you have to like be very careful how mm-hmm. you're injecting energy into it to make sure that it's running optimally. And so that that's what the like the tuning, like the it's like LCR where it's like an inductor, yeah. capacitor, and resistance, so that you can make sure that the energy is sort of like coming in and out or being dissipated. It's like it's like kind of the correct timing. Huh. Yeah, that's the easy part. I would say is just making the resonator co- to make to resonate at every frequency. Yeah. The hard part is having like injecting the right information into it at the right like cycles. Right. So, like you want this this one specific pulse to be slightly smaller than the next pulse. So it's like, like the next wave that comes up. Do you remember power transfer stuff? 
where you want your the induct the uh the impedance of your your you know power output to be similar to the impedance of your right like, power. yes impotence i remember yeah <laughs> so the more impotent you are but like i did this i kind of i figured this out a long time ago because i was like trying to wrap my head around it but like if you have like a, a voltage divider to get your voltage out yeah it's like a really shitty regulator yes yes yeah right where like as long as you're not drawing a lot of power it's probably good enough right and once you start drawing more power that your voltage is going to increasingly become not right. what you wanted it to be at that point <laughs> the lemon battery <laughs> with mark rover was a very similar problem huh. because the internal resistance of the battery very was so high, high yeah. that it was like how do you get as much power out of the lemon battery as possible and it was as by having a load some out, the voltage goes right. down so if your load has the exact same resistance as your battery that is the most optimal power transfer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you'll lose the least amount of power yeah. in your system huh, because yeah. if your battery has a really high resistance and your load has low resistance, you're not going to get that much power out. Right. And if it's the other way around, you're then also you're not, not going to get that much as power. much power as you could be getting. Right. And yeah. so the way to get all as much power out as possible is for your battery and your uh, or your your power supply and your load to have the exact same. So then impedance. for like lemons that like a shitty car battery, like what do you even well, do? So what I did is I rearranged that. the lemon battery. So it was more, it was like parallel versus series, ah, right? Okay, so okay. it was like, it's like the surface area of the, the tax that you put in there. Yeah. Adds, like that's what you're trying to maximize. It's like the speed of the chemical reaction. <laughs> yeah. So I changed it from, from like either, you know, to get from a higher voltage, I moved it down uh -huh. to a lower voltage, but more in parallel right. to lower the internal resistance. Yeah. And so it was like, instead of like, oh man, this 12 volts can push out one amp. And it was like, no, because the battery craps out first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so turning it to six volts can only do half an amp or like whatever. No, but, be, but you can push out more at the same time. Yeah. So yeah. the battery could keep up with the load. So it's, it's kind of like, I think there's some sort of that energy involved. We're yeah. tuning it, make sure that there's like a similar impedance so that you get power. Like you, you want to like get as much power out of your transmitter into the antenna. I, I, dude, it's a miracle that anything works. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. <laughs> like elevators and stuff. Uh, uh, GPS. <laughs> Airplanes. That was, that was my first job out of college was I was supposed to, I was, I was working with a defense contractor mm -hmm. for like GPS systems. And it's like, like you, your phone, like anything that has GPS has to talk to satellites. I know that are so far away yeah. and moving so fast in outer space that you have to account for general and special relativity. Like Einstein oh, wow. shit is real <laughs> and part like you it's it's a thing where you'd always think like well when when we when is that ever going to come into play unless you're like in a spaceship going 0.5c it's yeah. like no like you have to do math in your fucking phone to account for those satellites moving so fast so far away from earth's yeah. gravity yeah because when you uh depending on like the kind of the GPS, pulse actually takes like a certain amount of time yeah. to get to your phone from and that far away depending on the resolution that you out, want right? Yeah, so I mean the well that that was that was like Einstein like all those equations and shit existed. Well, yeah, before. but I'm talking about like since that one satellite sends out a pulse, it yeah. actually takes a certain amount of time for your phone to to yeah get it. But the satellite has now moved a little bit. Yeah, so it's it has to like do like triangulate each right. satellite too, and yeah. then compare them all. To yeah, each other. yeah, and that's you. You need to be in view of I think I think literally like three satellites to get yeah. in, in accurate positioning. But that was like the other things. Like people always think like, oh, like, you know, I've got that device has GPS. It's tracking. It's like, no, no, no. The, the your GPS only works if you can talk to the satellite. If you can see. That's why I say that it's like, you know, like light. The 2.4 gigahertz thing. Right. Because it's literally, it is light, but you it can go through it. walls. Like if yeah. you've ever used a thermal camera or something, you can uh -huh. see like, you know, you can see heat through things, but you can't see light through them. So if right. you kind of expand that further into like GPS mm -hmm. signals, it's like literally holding it's a, like dude, I, like a lightning bug in outer space. That's yeah. how much yeah. light your phone uh, yeah, is. Yeah, I, I mean it's yeah. like it's like it's so sensitive. But I think that's the frequency part, is that you can you can tune do for a, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's how like basically radios work, is it's it's still not a very big signal. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure that it's the frequency of that signal mm -hmm. that is filterable. Yeah. And so you can have really strong amplifiers and really strong filters. And right. you can pick up because it's just a magnetic field, right? Yeah. Like yeah. literally you put a magnet next to it. You would see the magnet shaking probably. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, like theoretically, like what if you put a, I mean, what, like, what if you put a magnet next to like a really high power radio tower? Like what would happen? Would, would you end up with like flex, like movement or anything? Like, is it a magnetic field? I, well, I think for it'd probably heat up. I think, I don't know though. 
the like modern radio towers you might not be able to notice it but like the old style ones like the like the spark gap transmitters i think like those were just shooting out so much fucking energy because it was very uh in, inefficient it was shooting out so much energy at those frequencies that i think if it was um what am amplitude yeah. modulation that if you lived nearby one of the old style spark gap transmitters you could hear it in like pots and pans in your kitchen you could hear it Oh yeah, I mean, but that was like the old shit, like the really the bad good stuff. Shit. Yeah, where it was like, like back when cars were stronger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because at that point, yeah, if you were close enough, like because if it, it, it's it's modulating the amplitude, and that's like where the signal information is carried in, like like um, if you have just a big piece of metal close enough to the tower, it's literally just just fucking banging electrons in it, and you can hear. So it. I think it would vibrate though, because I'm trying to think of like a transformer, right? Yeah. Like one time, oh, I, when it charges up, and you hear that. Like yeah, yeah. Thing? So I think those are like the two halves yeah. of the transformer or the wires smacking up against the transformer, making that noise. Just clapping those cheeks. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Okay, so a radio wave is not a photon. Well, <laughs> yes, it is. I feel like yes. we're I feel like we're missing something here. No, no, no. It it has to be. It is. Is wave particle duality, right? It's electromagnetic waves are also so you can make visible light photons. by by heating a wire up. Yeah, but you uh, can make a long wavelength by sh- by just shaking a wire. <laughs> it is. I think photons. Wait a minute. No, a photon. This doesn't make any sense. Because <laughs> you see, radio waves are described as photons, right? Yeah, because it's it is. It's literally just a di- like. There's no. Our difference eyes are between, just antennas yeah, for yeah. photons. We we can see a very right? small spectrum of <laughs> right. electromagnetic radiation, but it's all the same thing. So it's like it's like there's nothing special about the light coming off there and the light coming off a radio tower. It's just that this one we have photoreceptors. So so a radio tower should be putting out photons, but just not visible photons. So heating something up is just a different mechanism for generating. Well, you photons. can when you're heating it up, yeah, a lot of the energy is escaping as infrared radiation, and then like you know closer to infrared, which is red, which is like you know why you get something glowing red hot. Right. Um, so you can actually heat something up so much it starts to make ultraviolet light. Wasn't and even wasn't, further it makes X rays. Wasn't there a whole just from heat? What was the ultraviolet catastrophe? That was like a whole quantum mechanical thing, right? Where where like that was that was how they figured out that something had to be photons or waves like, because like something black, exploded far away or something. It was like 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 black body radiation didn't have a good explanation right though the whole the oh. whole phenomenon of when you like heat up a piece of metal it starts glowing it's black body radiation yeah. yeah like that whole concept like fell apart when they tried to think of like how hot you'd have to make something to make it put out ultraviolet i think i think they call it like the ultraviolet catastrophe oh, really because it realized there was a big flaw in like classical physics but I think quantum mechanics comes like and rescues that. I don't so, fucking so, know. Okay. We need, can, is so there I a think, guess? Can wait, wait, wait. We, if you know no, any no, of I like the answers no, to what I we're talking about, what you were about, saying makes sense. Then please, like, there's uh, a weird like a- activation. Oh yeah. Anyway. Uh, under this video is a comment that is a couple paragraphs long that someone has written <laughs> that is properly explaining everything we are saying. Everything here. wrong with us. Yes, please. And then right below it is something <laughs> worse. <laughs> if you're if you're if you're if you're listening in your car, take out your phone, look at the phone, don't look at the road and scroll down to the comments until you find the one that has the paragraphs that talks about who the most handsome uh, yeah. host is. Yeah, and then read that instead of whatever you were doing. Then at and the that's bottom, gonna be more worthwhile. <laughs> okay, so I think I think if we start kind of just simple, if you if you resonate, if you have like a tuning fork, right? Yeah. Okay. Two. Yeah. You have two. Let's say four hundred hurt tuning forks. Yeah. And you ding one. Yeah. And you put the other one next to it. It'll. The other going. one starts resonating. Yeah. I think. That is essentially how antennas work. Okay, but for electro... But instead of it shaking physically, it's it's like a... <laughs> right. But I don't even want to say a magnetic field. Is it, is it generating magnetic? Is that what it's the... It's an the, electromagnetic yeah. field, so it's, but it's also a photon. So it's generating electromagnetic field in pulses, and it's causing the other antenna to sort of subtly resonate, and then that yeah. antenna has filtering that really allows only resonant signals through. Oh, right. okay. It's like... It's like you're in a in a pool, yeah. and and you have a beach ball, and you start smashing it in the water, yeah. creating a, a ripple, and then the beach ball at the other end of the pool also starts going up and down too. Yeah, yes. but imagine that those two beach balls only respond to a certain frequency of going right. up and yeah. down. Also, one of the beach balls is in fucking outer space, <laughs> and the other one is like in a house. No, I think you could do this yeah. with something could, big. It'll still go at the what same. What if you did it like in the ocean, and you have like two big heavy floating things? Uh-huh. Like the tiny waves won't cause 
any sort of modulation. Yeah. Okay. But if you were to start moving one up and down at its like natural frequency, like if you were to sort of time it to make sure it was going at its natural frequency, right? I yeah. think it would induce way a higher amplitude in the other object because it shares yeah a resonant frequency. Yeah. Water so, out. Yeah. So the tiny ones won't do anything. It'll just look, there'll be collisions and the energy won't match up. Uh -huh. But if you were to naturally get that big one going, the other yeah. one would 100% pick up the Well, energy. the tiny ones would also just rise the wave, ride the wave. Yeah, they would just ride it. And then and yeah. that's frequency modulation or amplitude uh, modulation. Where, I don't know. Is that AM? I've, I don't know. What is, we, take a, we take a weight and then we move it up and down 2.4 billion times a second <laughs> in the ocean. Because <laughs> it's giga, right? Gigahertz? Yeah. Because mega... Giga, yeah. billion. So it's literally two, two and a half billion times a second. And then the light that we can see is Terra. Hertz. No, 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 no. It's not. No. What's it? No. I don't. I don't. Visible I don't light. Think so yeah, visible light is way less than gigahertz. Gigahertz uh, is like way up there, isn't it? No, gigahertz is way down there. Down? Yeah. No. Yeah, millimeter wave is. Uh, that's a microwave. They're yeah, millimeter. but I thought the wavelength of visible light was way bigger than millimeter. No, visible is nanometer. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that sounds right. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like like frequency modulation is it speeds up and slows down. Yeah. So maybe then the antenna has to have like sensitivity to like a certain age. Wait, but then how does like a car antenna work? It just changes how it's filtering. Wait a second. Wait till you... Uh, what, I don't... <laughs> what's well, bandwidth? Like a car antenna and then still works bands, even if you unscrew then, it or make it shorter. It still works. Right. But then it's just maybe a real... Maybe that's why it sounds so shitty. It's because it's like it has like a broad sensitivity and then you're just yeah. tuning... But the, it's what the same tuning? antenna for AM and FM, isn't it? Like yeah, but AM, AM is they don't have to amplitude be modulation. Yeah. So that's like making it the you signal just, like louder or quieter. FM, it actually speeds up and slows down the wave. <laughs> I don't. Oh, no, I don't think it speeds up and slows down the wave. I, I think it, it messes up the the Maybe wave this picture profile. I found oh, it does. Right okay. though. Well, what's the one where it just like. Oh no, I'm thinking of where they like superimpose one frequency. Is that, is that the FM? Other. Oh yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So then yeah, so FM the carrier wave. is a is like a long carrier wave yeah. with a bunch of scribbles on it. That's right. the actual signal, but the filtering will still pick that up because it's it's I think that's the magic of like 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 filters, like bandpass filters, is that you can make a signal that another signal rides on, filter out the big signal, and that other signal will come in with through it. Like, Wait, how does it. FM even work though? Because it, it it also has to be a photon, but you're modulating the frequency. But photons are discrete. So are you sending like like different discrete Just photons of different di different densities, or is it a different frequency? Wait, how the fuck does that work? Well, I think I think that it's magic. <laughs> Because I thought the whole idea of a photon is a discrete packet of energy. So it's like it's it like, has a wavelength, like a specific, like, but how do you but it's, modulate? It's like Fourier stuff, right? Where it's just signals on top of signals and you can just sort of rip them apart. And you just say, give me only that piece out of it. Like when you look at the whole thing, it looks super complicated. So but is it like a, like, it's like if you, if you looked at it as like photons is an FM signal, like a bunch of different photons of different wavelengths kind of coming out at the same time you, i think you would see you would see the signal generally gets like dimmer and brighter but then there would also be fluctuations in it that are much faster so you'd see like really fast flickering and then like gradual dimmer and brighter is there just is there just like imagine to imagine like imagine you take a signal and put on a sine wave like a led yeah. and put on a sine wave. it's yeah. gonna get bright and dark and no, bright that, that, but then you add a twinkle to it but that all totally makes sense yeah. if you're just thinking about it as waves like only waves right yeah. but then you have to if you think about it as a discrete packet because it, it is it's both it has yeah. to be both how, how does how does that work like how does it pick up the comp the everything combined yeah how do you modulate the frequency of a photon because i thought a photon was like a set packet of Right, because it's like, well, I mean, let's light it's is how just hard you push photons it. of different frequencies. Like, I, I guess if you were like, if oh you, no, I know what you're if saying. If you had like, if you had an LED, an RGB LED, you're never modulating the frequency of the light. You're modulating the amount of R, G, and B. The color's changing because that's how you perceive it, but you're not yeah. like it's you're, you're just differing the brightness of a single wavelength yeah. between the three of them. I think so that's how do you? That's the signals on the signals. So then, like one of the signals. You're you're looking for just the radio wave, and then the the signals on top of that. So like 
Like the LED is putting out light, right? So the LED yeah. is putting out light. That yeah. never changes. Yeah. So that's always it, like yeah. so a you're, couple you're, hundred you're nanometers. Never, you're never changing the frequency of the light itself when you're changing the color of, a, of an LED. You're just, you're changing, you have set frequencies, set photon frequencies, and you're changing the amounts of each and you perceive it as different colors. But you always see it as it's always one color, but you're transferring data by changing right. how Right, but much. That, that only works because it's in our eyeballs. But you can still, if you filter for 900, let's say, nanometers, uh -huh. you're only letting 900 nanometer light in, then all you have to do is look at the signal of that light. So the filter is on the light color. So then if you were detect, if you put a filter for that, and then you put a photon detector on that, you'll actually get photons of that wavelength yeah you're not you're not, not measuring you're not measuring any. 900 nanometers anyway i hope that makes sense to you guys <laughs> how nope. long how long I do you think it would take us if you just gave us like a box of resistors and capacitors <laughs> and inductors <laughs> to make a working radio like not not it's being like, able to use the internet like we have we to be like, locked in this yeah. room like you know if, if people in prison can do it we can do it right yeah we just have to take apart that old tv i feel like it would take us like Probably a we could do something in like a week or two, maybe. All we need is a is a working FM radio, and we can make it <laughs> using parts from an FM radio <laughs> to make an FM radio. I mean, there's no there's no single person. There's not just like a guy who knows. It's like all of these you would have to ask a guy for one very small part of it. Yeah. And between like a hundred guys collectively, you'd be able to answer all these questions. But isn't that freaky that there's not just like a guy who knows all? Imagine of this? spending six years and you're like, I built a radio. Oh my god! Is, and then the FCC comes in and says and says you have to throw it in the trash. I, yeah, it's too strong. I, <laughs> yeah, that's how you could do it is a spark gap. Just like, oh, do, do, God, do, a do, spark do, gap. Do, do, do. I mean, would they even care if you did like a pirate radio station that no. was like an old style spark gap trailer? FCC? Dude, they would be on your shit so fast. Really? But I mean, that's just like a Tesla coil. You, do I they think care there's about power Tesla limits. Coilers? You can do experimental stuff, but I think right. at some point. Um, <laughs> what, like a kilowatt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that might be too experimental. <laughs> Yeah, I think spark gaps are really bad because they kind of broadcast on every frequency. Yeah, yeah. Which means they also put out a lot of different photons. Oh, no. So then you get like... So like it's like a, the gamer transmitter. If you could see it, if you could shift it to visible light, it would, be, it would look like a disco party, like a rave. One of the things I researched a long time ago was for like unintentional broadcasting. Right. So, you know, like like some microprocessors, <clears throat> some electronics will have like a cap, a oh, little cap on them. Yeah. It's because when you start driving digital signals at like, you know, like megahertz or it gigahertz, starts transmitting. it starts like actually transmitting. And so now you, without even trying to build a radio, have built a radio uh, that's not actually a radio. It just happens to be blasting off waves. And that's a huge no-no. So that's like, I think that's probably mostly what the FCC does is not actually looking at radio waves, but looking at unintended waves. Like when all people do like the FCC testing on their devices, right. I think that's all it is. <clears throat> you know, people have found out that they can uh, hack computers like that. They can get information from computers from oh that because phenomenon. inside the computer it's it's going to be leaking some kind of information electromagnetically yeah, yeah. and what they'll do is that they'll like basically amplitude modify the power into the computer so then downstream uh, they can put a tap on the line and see like they can transmit oh. Morse code or like whatever to a guy that has like a current sensor on the power line and they could pulse like I don't know something that takes a lot of power like the GPU. Just like boom, 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 and transmit passwords like Jesus. that. Jesus, there was. I remember yeah. a while ago. I don't know if it's still a thing, but a while ago, um, there was like some invention back when like Wi-Fi I think was a lot crappier, but it was supposed to solve um like like back connection issues before like mesh networks were like were like a thing. It was um this idea that you could transmit information by modulating your lights. Oh. So it's like it's like you could you could have like a station that was like uh, photosensitive somehow and you could modulate data over your light bulbs in a way that you would never notice. Yeah, but that a station could pick up and that way every room in your house would be able. But the problem like then is like you, all the rooms would be getting the same fucking thing. I think there's a reason why. Yeah, that but that's how that's ever... how radios work. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you're when you're you know, little brother's watching porn in his room, your phone is picking up those signals. It's just <laughs> Yeah, I guess however they yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that was radio, my that was my brother and it's just coming on my Dude, if you were the Wi Fi router, you'd be like 
uh, or picture of a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Six girls, one dude. <laughs> Muffin recipe. I mean, honestly, <laughs> and then you're just you're just like ignoring whatever the hell's going on your brothers. You're like, please God, stop, please God stop. We used that used to be a beginning exercise for how we would teach kids uh, about microcontrollers. That like I used to do a maker summer camp thing, and so like to get that concept across, what we would start day one was not even touching the computer. It was we would have kids just write like single action instructions on note cards, and yeah. then we would like hand them out to kids and then they would mm. have to do it in that order and then repeat over and over mm. again if, okay. if it, like there's an instruction that said like repeat at the top um so it's like you could definitely kid teach kids about routers by having them scream out <laughs> things that you want to see so it's like you just, it's fucking a kid in the middle and then six people around them and every one of them tells the kid what they want to see and you just say i want to see boobs and the kid goes <laughs> Boobs <laughs> for Greg. For Greg. <laughs> Just Greg. Only Greg's allowed to see this. <laughs> Greg has a decoder ring on. <laughs> for all I know, that's how it actually works. No, it a is. tiny man yeah. in the router that's <laughs> just screaming. And pleading with the other people not to decipher what's coming through. <laughs> But that, that's why I think encryption solves that problem mostly. How does yeah. anything work? How does anything ever happen? That's the miracle of 2.4 gigahertz. <laughs> <laughs> Porn, muffin recipes, <laughs> and pictures of kittens all happening at the same time and across dozens of houses in the same Making a area. hot pocket in the microwave. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh-huh. It can serve me pictures of boobs and cook my yep. cook my food for me. It's actually like super cursed. You know, there was a thing like I was more of my crap I was researching a long time ago. I think it's called like Z-Wave or something. It was smart home devices and it used instead of transmitting over light, uh -huh. it would transmit over the the uh, voltage cross, the zero threshold of your AC wave. Oh my God. So it would wait until it was at zero and then, and so then it would inject data <laughs> into the <stream. laughs> So the idea is you could plug the thing just yes. into your outlet. And it would communicate then... using your house, oh, your man. house wires. And it was just, it was hijacking that cross point. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I mean, That's you know clever. The, the bizarre thing though is, is like none of these things are like, I mean, there's obviously like a lot of technical things that are wrong with them and bad, but it's like the, any of them were probably only like, like just off by timing or like marketing to become the dominant yeah. way of doing things. Like, like the, even if it sounds really bad, there's like probably only a, like a, a a period of years and maybe like a few hundred thousand dollars separating that from us using Wi-Fi. Yeah. Like like any of that could have just been the way we do things. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. You know what? I got one of those. Okay. I think I finally have the example of a technology that everything kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Bluetooth. Okay. Bluetooth. Yeah. It just got used for everything. It got used for everything and it cannot keep up. And it's so bad and it's the only thing and I hate it so much. It's like okay. Have you ever tried listening to or playing a video game using Bluetooth headset or a Bluetooth speaker? Yeah, uh, no. I. It's, uh, there's there's lag. Yeah, there's a lot of latency. Oh, it's like how they not God. solved this problem yet. Because uh -uh. it was never there's, meant to solve that problem. There's less lag than yeah. it problem. takes for me to load a web like yeah. a web page will load faster than like uh, sound will play over my speakers. It's bad. Yeah, yeah. it's what's, really bad. What's the Bluetooth spectrum? I think two point four. Yeah. Wait, it's, really? It's all oh two point four. Dude, it's all two point four. Uh huh. That's like the astronaut meme right now. Are you telling me it's, <laughs> it's, it's always been two point four? <laughs> so wait, how is Bluetooth? It's a different protocol, but it's the same yeah. frequency as Wi-Fi. It's and like microwaves it's like kind of the same thing monitors. as Wi-Fi, just not. <laughs> well, then why don't all those devices just use Wi-Fi? I don't know. I don't there's a reason there must it's like I, a I actually have no like idea a, like no. it was supposed to be like a, maybe a simpler version of Wi-Fi oh, then God. people started basically using as Wi-Fi yeah. like transmitting audio it's like Wi-Fi but literally worse in every yeah. single way I, I you can't even transfer file have you tried transferring a file over Bluetooth oh it takes it takes it's a joke why yeah. even give me the option no, it's bad yeah no it's it's, <laughs> it's like honestly, actually bad <laughs> It's embarrassing. It's like you get bad. 50 kilobytes yeah. per second or something like Dude, that. That's good. It was like uh, there was there was um I think there was one of the one of the movies or shows for like the original Transformers um like Optimus Prime's consciousness had to like be transferred out of his body and they wait the way they, they did was, a, it was, it was a, no it was uh, they they put it on a floppy disk uh, which implies that all really of dumb. Yeah, all of Optimus <laughs> Prime's consciousness fits in like hundreds of kilobytes. Yeah. So, like 
I think I saw an article. Descri- it was probably on like Cracked back in the day, but it was like like they had a gif, uh, just like an anime gif of Optimus Prime like exploding. Like this gif has more information than all of Optimus Prime's like soul. <laughs> but it's like because back then you couldn't imagine more storage than that. So yeah. of course you upload Optimus Prime onto a floppy single disk. floppy disk. So it's like yeah, maybe Bluetooth was like I, you know even back transfer. then you you could buy programs that would come in a volume of floppy disks. Yeah, right. Oh, so, you think it should have been like a couple of them? That no, they I think Optimus they knew. Prime. What they were doing, I think he's just really <laughs> dumb. Just, or it's like maybe, maybe it's just like like the the Cybertronians or whatever, like really figured out consciousness, and it's like it turns out you don't actually need that much. It's like a random, it's like one line of code in a random seed. Yeah, like it turns out yeah, all the exactly. like all the neurons we have is really inefficient because of how evolution works. But it's like if mm. you actually boiled it down, it only needs about a hundred kilobytes. <laughs> yeah, or it just starts him off as like default optimist. He doesn't have any of his memories. <laughs> well, that's why like one of the first things like God, it, it's really. Sad yeah, to yeah, say it's that. like the the boot disc yeah. or something. <laughs> he just boots up and he's like, "There's <laughs> <laughs> nothing else." <laughs> I, I feel shitty and pissy. I feel that. really bad after this entire thing and now saying that I majored in electrical engineering. Uh, no, don't worry. Everyone else you graduated with had no idea no. what was going on. But like that was, I remember one of the first uh, like. Um, like what is it the like circuit design classes i took mm. where we're learning like how to like simplify or decompose like it's like you can take this like sort of large scope um state machine but then you can realize that there's like a lot of like things that can overlap and yeah. so you can you can basically like you can almost reduce something very complicated a complicated state machine it's like that, digital logic <clears throat> yeah you can turn it into like a smaller yeah. number of like zor gates and it'll do the exact yeah. same thing that you needed to. Yeah. And that, like, ever since I learned that idea, I was like, how many Zor gates is a person really? Like, you could yeah. probably, yeah. I think if you, depending on you, the scope, you could probably make someone out of like five Zor gates. As yeah. Long well, as, like, there you go. If you go below, <laughs> they start having seizures. <laughs> well, because if, like, if you have your basic states of like hungry, Horny, yeah. angry, Hung- happy, <laughs> horn- sad. Horngry. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, horngry is too many because then you need two. Those, if, if as long as it's only one output at a time, I think it's pretty simple. If you need to do two, then I don't know if you can do that with that many Zor gates. We just did. We filmed a little thing with the uh, the guys who did the zero gravity three D printer, the instant three D printer at mm. Open Source. We, we went up it. to Berkeley. I didn't, I didn't. I didn't see it either. But we just went up to Berkeley, and so I did see it. Uh-huh. Um, and I was like, they were showing me everything, like how the whole thing works. Mm. And it made me realize like there is like, because one of the questions I asked is like for the slicing, basically. Uh. Okay. The zero gravity printer, the instant 3D printer is a CT scanner in reverse. So oh, instead is of it like, like cures yeah. resin in a circle Correct. kind of a thing. And so what oh, it does wow. is over a period of the cure time, which you have to inject a certain amount of energy into the resin for it to cure. They're, they're projecting like shadows onto it basically like they're projecting light into the resin so that as the photons travel through each area gets a corresponding amount of energy so it all cures at the same time but what that means is you end up with a lot of conflicts where you can't exclusively put light in some areas right and so one of the ideas and i asked him was like what about like a do not care Mm -hmm. like do you have is there and does the software have any idea of like do not care like i do not care what happens in this area right because Mm -hmm. that would essentially reduce you know what it has to think about and it's like oh i can like here i can i have a way higher thrust i can blast whatever i want here yeah because i don't care if this <clears throat> middle section of the gear that's just a hollow shaft like it'll just fall out anyways right, once it's right. cured it's like really interesting of like not having to solve the whole problem so is it like a line it just exposes like a line it's a two-dimensional image projecting through it and it's, like, oh, so it is, wow. it's like a line but it's like a lot of lines at the same <laughs> okay, time okay okay <laughs> no but that's exactly well, you like, can, it's you a can, lot like yeah. one dimension except there's a whole nother dimension <laughs> you could do it with a single line it would just take way longer yeah but it would be more collimated um i don't think it matters, it really matters. so okay. you can do it and that's why this stuff is a little nasty there's math basically to compensate for the fact that it's a cone <sighs> yeah and it it actually because when i was, you know i want to build the ct scanner eventually instead of taking the single line or like instead of doing a perfectly like parallel beam collimated beam mm-hmm. you can actually just take your cone beam and then rearrange the slices from different angles so yeah. you take a slice that was here you know two angled ones from different angles will share angles and so you rearrange the angles and you can oh. have buckets of straight lines oh dear <laughs> Don't, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of doing fancy math to compensate for the light going through at different angles, yeah. you can just reorganize all the different beams going through it. And then do a bunch of fancy math. To, to no, that. you don't have to do fancy oh, math. No. You just say, I know that 
at, at angle 45 degrees oh, to, and to angle 35, I can take line and, yeah. pixel number four and pixel number yeah, you know, 12 yeah, yeah. and they, I can put them in the same bucket. Can they yeah. use it to print like a really uh, accurate Lola bunny, you know, really from Space quickly. Jam? I mean, it worked. It worked pretty well on certain types of things. <laughs> I think you'd be better off. If, well, how high fidelity? Like really good. How big like do you want butt it? cheeks, right? Oh no, I like, think you'd have to use something else. <laughs> what, was but it, we could figure it out. Does it have like so? So it has like the must have the equivalent of like like not being able to like print overhangs and stuff, right? Of like no, we can do that. all that. The, like the, also, the problem it's is suspended in like a liquid. Yeah, the gel is pretty thick, and so it kind of well. It, I mean, oh, it is a gel. Yeah. It's like a okay. resin. Yeah, so you can. You could basically you're like you're solving for you're trying to get an equal amount of energy into every part you want exposed. Yeah. And you're trying to not get that energy into places you don't want exposed. Right. And so it's like it's like a game of like, where can I put my photons? That's not going to put this little area over the threshold to expose. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah. How does how fast is it? Ten seconds. It's instant. It's ridiculous. For what the what's what's the build volume? It's like a tube. Uh, the one they were demoing is like maybe the size of like a quarter, and then it's God. like a few like a like a couple inches tall. So the the envelope for that one, but they have like a big one they can do. But then you start ending with uh, you have there's different problems with the bigger ones, and I I don't remember exactly. I mean that's still that's like that's really crazy that you could have so I mean yeah. even something yeah. that size, especially yeah. if, it's, if it's like parts for something, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean I have a nut and bolt that work. <clears throat> Really? That yeah. were printed totally like worked. 10 yeah. seconds in that thing. Wait, yeah, yeah, together, 10 seconds. together the same the print? Fuck. Uh, or two in, different In the same prints. vial. Oh, okay. They, they, it's not, it's I not. I don't know if they'd have the good enough resolution to keep stuff from thing. sticking. They have high resolution. Yeah. But it's like, it, it's like a bleeding problem. Yeah, it's like feathered edges. Yeah, mm. exactly. So if you try to do two things too close to each other, it's hard to not expose the gap in between. Yeah. Them. And then yeah, certain makes... objects expose better. It's it's a very weird, very complicated problem that like yep. needs a lot of software to actually make work like super well. And I guess it also the benefit is that because it doesn't have to like raise out of like a pool, that's why yeah. it can work in zero G. Yeah. It can just do the whole thing in one loop and the part just floats in there. Yeah. That's it's, oh my god. It was very it was very, very cool. Like though it's it's funny though, like how nice 3D printing is now with all the software. Oh, yeah. Watching them do it, it's just like Python scripts and stuff. <laughs> it was so it was like it was so he was like trying to get it to work and then something had updated and so he couldn't oh, export go- the video. So the yeah. way it works is it's just it's a video playing uh-huh. from a projector and then a motor spinning at a certain speed and you just sort of hope the two clocks are in sync. Oh my god! There's oh, no... I thought it'd be way fancier than that. Nah. I guess because it's all software that yeah. has to like make it work. So you literally like once you start exposing it, the video just loops. We could do that. <laughs> yeah, if we, if we still. That's easy. We could do the that. The software's all on online too, so I'm pretty sure you could take a traditional resin yeah. printer. And turn it into a projector, or if they have a projector one, how do you turn a LCD into a projector? You could you would, put you a, could just put a lens it. in front of it, right? Yeah, that's or, all a projector is. They have tiny little LCDs in there. But do you need a lens in front? You need a lens. Yeah. Right? So you'd have a light. So if you bought a resin, oh, I mean, printer, or you could just what if you just like used a computer monitor or your phone as a projector? Well, the, the, <clears> the print I'm trying to think like like a printer already said like the resin printers already have an LCD in there. Yeah. So if you took the LCD and then put a lens in front of it, you could project that image onto a vat. So you could use the motor from the printer to spin. Oh, okay. You I could see, use the I projector see. and the LCD to like project the light through. Like I think you could literally repurpose a resin printer into an instant 3D printer. You could use I mean, I'm just saying you could probably use your oh well, it has to be UV light, right? Yeah. Is that so they have to yeah. strip certain things out of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. God, that's cool. Well, uh, speaking of um, number one, things that I'm glad aren't or like that 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 we, that that we stopped people doing. are working no, no, on and that not we us. stopped doing like your Z <clears throat> your Z wave thing. Yeah, I I remember I had this microcontroller or something, and I had to program it by turning on a program on my computer. Then I had to hold this up to the computer and had a photo sensor, and it would like blink Morse uh. code <laughs> into the microcontroller or something to program it, and it would take like Wait, five minutes. That's badass, though. That's crazy. I can't remember what it was, but I I know I didn't like Wait, using it. Wait, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so this <laughs> this is such a good example of like how shitty the wireless protocols are. Like, like I remember we were trying to build this garden sensor out of out of college. My friend and I were doing like a Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. And it was like, how do you connect this to your phone? I'm like, I have no idea. Like, well, you have to connect it. It has to, the device has to 
show up as a Wi-Fi hotspot. And you connect your phone to the Wi-Fi hotspot that doesn't have internet. Yeah. Then you give it the information oh, to your yeah. actual Wi-Fi network. Yeah. And then it's and like... And then, then it sends that information yeah. to your thing, and then that thing can get on the same yeah. network. There was another garden sensor, though, that did exactly that. So you had the app on your phone, and you yeah. would hold the, the flashlight no, up to it. No, that... I was about to say that. That's yeah. awesome. Flashlight. Oh, yeah, nice. I think it was the flashlight oh, on the screen. Oh, my or yeah. God. I wish everything worked yeah. like that. That's so cool. But, like, that actually is more convenient for small amounts of data... <laughs> For small amounts of data yeah. than having to connect. I was like, how do you make your grandparent do this? Like, this is insane. Or like Bluetooth where it's like, make sure the number is. No, just click OK. Yeah. Like, like, right. Has that ever happened? No. Who cares if they I see know, what I I know. <laughs> yeah. That's, I. Oh, that's so cool. And then you have like Apple comes in with kind of like a solution to all this, but then it's locked into their ecosystem. Bastards. But even then it kind of doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, like iMessage. Yeah. And like the Wi-Fi shit. You know, when someone's trying to log in. Oh, yeah. Like, because I don't, I have an Android and I don't, like, that's cool as hell. Like, when someone tries to log into a Wi Fi network, the if, same, same network as yeah. somebody else. How does it know, though? Does it know if you're in the contacts or something? Or, like, no, I don't think so. It'll just, so then do you get notifications at like a, wait, what is this thing where if you have an iPhone, yeah, yeah, and you're logged into a Wi Fi network. So let's yeah. say Kevin logs into a Wi Fi network with his iPhone, yeah, and then you try to log into it, uh huh. Kevin's phone will receive a ping asking if, it, he wants to give you access to the network and the phones will share credentials yeah and then you don't have to type the password or, or what? yeah yeah it might be a contact thing maybe there's got to be yeah. some security i've never i've never seen that before i don't have enough friends with wi-fi i guess <laughs> <laughs> you talking about alex and his property yeah. <laughs> we'll we can't we'll ask him about it we should ask him, him let's say we'll yeah. come over to his property when he has wi-fi in a toilet yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes Yes, hello. Looks nice in here, doesn't it? Hi, potato. Look at these chairs. Like these are chairs. legit. Potato. Who do you think she's staring at? She's staring at Alan, I think. No, she's staring look at me. Here, look over here, look over Hi, here, look over here. Like a cat. Potato, yeah. can, potato can't be on the podcast today. She has a big dent in her forehead from Papa. <laughs> <laughs> an hour. Well, we have to oh. cut out all the slurs. Yeah. So we got to have about 15 extra <laughs> yeah. minutes. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, supporting us on uh, our Patreon. Like, yeah. We were able to. We bought new chairs. We actually bought new cameras. If you if know you how um, any anything <laughs> works, please. Does it look better? Tell us yeah. how things. No, they, that's not how anything works. They literally already have. <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, it's, it's the best way to get free advice online is to post the wrong yeah, information. Yeah, everything wrong that we've said. Tell us hey how guys, we're wrong. I need help doing this. No one says anything. Hey guys, this is how this works. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, so, let and us look, know if the I, cameras look better. I took this. Are we doing names? Yeah. Okay, I still, took okay. this name and it's. I just turned it into photons. <laughs> <laughs> I took this photon <laughs> and turned it into this name. <laughs> And then I, I stuck it up. I stuck it up my butt. I took these photon, this this photon, <laughs> these names that are made of photons, and I'm going to turn them into higher. I'm turning them into gamma rays. <laughs> you have, you now have cancer. <laughs> only, but only if you watch the video. If you are listening to the audio, you're fine. No, you're you fine. still have cancer. You got your cancer <laughs> from just the audio. <laughs> you're hearing it, yeah. We played a tone that specifically is like the asbestos of tones. And give you ear cancer. Yeah, <laughs> it's tuned to your DNA to make it. Yeah, it come the, apart. The resonant frequency of your genes, and so that now they got all messed up. We should do an episode where we just make the most annoying sounds we can for a couple minutes, and then see what the retention looks like. <laughs> How many people skip forward? Oh wait, wait. wait. Where well, we do it for a I long enough I... time where it's too annoying to skip forward because they're not necessarily watching. You now people are kind of like away from their computer. They have headphones in or something like that. I wonder if do you think is there a certain tone that we could make with our mouths that would like be replicated in the retention graph of like going up and down people like <laughs> clicking and skipping probably really annoying sounds and then, and then asmr mm. hey little mama let me whisper in your ear or little papa we don't discriminate here i have potato <laughs> i have a potato now okay potato don't anyway, look the cameras don't show i know where we can find a bunch of earwigs outside yeah <laughs> All right, if you guys subscribe to the Safety Third Patreon, we'll post the earwig video. 